amazing students. This is Mrs. A and I love math. And tonight we're doing lesson 57 in your Saxon Orange book and we're talking about addition of algebraic expressions with negative exponents. Now we've already worked on fractions like this. So this is a fractional or rational expression and this is a rational expression and when we add them, we must get a common denominator. So we've already done this type of uh, problem, um, but when we do it, we're going to see how we're going to attack the same type of problem with negative exponents. Because wouldn't you agree that if I moved x squared to the numerator, wouldn't it be x to the negative 2? And if I moved y up to the numerator, wouldn't it be y to the negative 1? So these are negative exponents that have just been put into a positive exponent form. So when we see how to do these, then we'll know how to do the negative exponents we're talking about in this lesson. Anytime we have two different denominators and we're trying to add some fractions together, don't we have to get a common denominator. Well here we've got an x squared but over here we have an x cubed. So we could make that an x squared just by multiplying by another x on the numerator and the denominator. Well this one has a y but this one does not have a y. So we can make them common denominators by multiplying this one by y over y. And they're still not the same yet because I have an m squared over here, but no m squared over here. So I'm going to multiply the numerator and the denominator by m squared. Now we look. We got x, x squared, and an x cubed. Those are the same. We've got a y and a y. We've got an m squared and an m squared. So now our denominators are the same. Now the expression that we get when we add these two fractions that have the same denominator together is x a m squared plus b y over the common denominator x cubed y, m squared y. And that's what we're going to be doing in this lesson. Okay, so example here, we have an expression that is not simplified, but we can rewrite it as rational expression. So we can say a to the times x to the negative 1 is a over x plus 1 over y. And then we get a common denominator, which means I need to make this a y over y, and this one an x over x. Remember when I multiply by 1, I change nothing. So now I have the same denominator, so I can just write it down there, the common denominator, y a plus x. Now that is considered simplified. Okay, so here's another example. We have a lot of different variable terms in here, but we need to simplify this expression. So we're going to move the y downstairs. So we have ax over y plus bz. Now, I need a y under here, so I'm going to make a denominator and multiply by y over y. So now I have a common denominator of y and I'm ready to just add together AX plus BZY. There's my answer. Okay, hey, here is our last example before we do our practice problems. This is a short lesson, isn't it? Okay, so A to the negative 2 is going to go downstairs. X will stay upstairs. Y will go downstairs because the negative exponent sends it down plus A over Z. Now we have nothing in common with these, these two denominators. So this one's going to need another Z. This one's going to need an A squared Y. A squared Y. A squared Y. 
and now my denominator is the same. So I'm going to write down my common denominator on the denominator of my expression and zx plus a times a squared is a cubed y. And now we're ready to do our practice problems. Here is your first practice problem, so copy it down and go see if you can do it without looking at my work. Pause your video. All right, so let's hopefully you did that. So let's do this a over x minus b over y squared. And I don't have anything in common, but I have to make them common. So I'm going to multiply by y squared, y squared, and x and x. So now my denominator is the same on both sides, and I am subtracting instead of adding. So I'm going to have a y squared a minus bx. And you'll notice in your book it really doesn't matter which order you write your variables in. I think they probably put the a in front, but it's not that important. So if you put the a in front, that's fine. If you left it in the back, that's fine. That's it. Last practice problem. Okay, so copy it down and go and do it on your own. So we're going to look at this one first, and the a's and the y's are going to come downstairs. We're going to have x over a cubed y to the 1 is just y minus b stays upstairs, x squared comes downstairs. Now, I don't have anything in common, but I need to multiply by x squared over x squared. Multiply this side by a cubed over a cubed and y over y. So, I made a boo-boo there. That should have been an x squared. Okay, so now we have the same denominator. So we're going to have x squared a cubed y on the bottom. On the top, we're going to have x cubed minus b a cubed y. x cubed minus b a cubed y over x squared a cubed y. That's a pretty easy section, isn't it? And we are done with section 57. This is Mrs. A, and may God bless your day.